This is a house of refuge for the addicted and afflicted. But in order to pr perform its perfect role in the kingdom, the people that God has brought out and brought into this local body must fully submit themselves to the Spirit of God, must fully submit themselves to prayer and consecration, for this is a place of refuge for the afflicted and addicted. I'm talking about the drug bound. Listen, I used to be an addict. I was hooked to crack. I was hooked to, to crystal meth at 13, 14 years old. And I know what it feels to go into a church and feel that spirit of deliverance in that place in a special way. And it's amongst you people. But there is a war that has been raging in the spirit amongst this place. A war within the mind of each and every one of you that has been causing you guys to take a step back every time the Lord says take a step forward. But thus saith the Lord of hosts, if you submit yourself fully to this word and give yourself unto me, you will see the addicted and afflicted come into this place and be fully delivered. Not partially delivered, not temporarily delivered, but delivered like those that we see in the book of Acts. Like those that we read about in the word of the living God. Hearken unto the voice of the Lord this morning and return back to that place of your calling. This is not just a responsibility of the leaders. It is not just the responsibility of the pastor or the pastor's wife. The responsibility is upon you all to give yourselves to prayer. The youth of this church, I see so much intimidation upon them when I see them that's going to be lifted in the name of Jesus you will begin to operate in boldness in the name of the Lord listen God woke me up early this morning for this church woke me up early in the morning and he wasn't speaking to me he just said keep praying keep praying keep praying and I just kept praying I haven't heard anything yet I'm just trying to be sensitive to God this morning hallelujah and be the messenger that this local body needs hallelujah God wants to take you to places you've never been <laughs> Only if we can truly see and truly hear those things that he has prepared for us. Those things that he wants to do for us and through us. We will give our whole heart unto him. All right, Father. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray you guide my lips. I pray you direct my mind. I pray that this word, Father, will cause your children to get closer and closer to you. By the authority that's in the word of God and the power that's in your name, Jesus. Let every stopped up ear every deaf ear God be opened up let every blind eye begin to see mass deliverance of the mind this morning in Jesus name we pray amen you may be seated in the matchless name of Jesus hallelujah Praise God. <clears throat> you know, you guys are not a, a huge church. But you don't have to be a big church with all the programs and the fancy stuff. 
to have God dwell in the midst of you people. Prayer is probably, if not the number one weapon that we have in our arsenal. Number one, I believe that without prayer, you can try to read this book front to back. The devils know this book front and back. But they don't have revelation of this book because they are not of God. The Pharisees and the scribes read this book and they knew this book, but they didn't have revelation of what the scriptures were saying. You can't even begin to understand the deep things of God or revelation of His Word if you don't have a prayer life. You can read it all you want, but you have the dangers of actually becoming like a scribe and Pharisees to think that you know it all, but really you don't know nothing at all about what God is truly, truly trying to do amongst His people. Prayer is vital. Personal prayer is vital. Corporate prayer is vital for the children of the living God. But what the enemy has tried to do is get us adjusted. Oh, you wicked thing. What he's tried to do is try to get the church so comfortable with everything else, with the music, with the announcements. Listen, Sister Connor, we lost our drummer at our church, and I play the piano, and I am not that good at the piano. And that drummer held me down. And for a moment when she left, me and my wife have been pastoring the uh, Spanish ministry. Um, and as I say that, I want to thank Sister Connor and Pastor Connor for the privilege to come here with you guys today. Um, sorry, I'm just mentioning it now. I'm just trying to be in the flow of what God wants to do this morning. Uh, and when we lost her, I began to tell my wife, we're just going to cut the music off. We're not going to have no music. And at first, like expected, some folks didn't like it. Some folks had issues with it. And in my mind, I was like, man, well, what, what am I supposed to do now? Our church isn't even that big. If these folks get bothered enough, they're going to leave. You guys are probably bigger than the ministry that we've been recently pastoring. And God began to convict me. And he began to speak to me. And he began to direct me to the word of God. And one of the first things that they did was they prayed together. They sang together. But the instruments didn't matter. So you know what I do now? We begin to pray and God gives me a song. I just start singing that song. You want to sing with me? Sing with me. You want to keep praying? Then keep praying. But as long as we're in the book, it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter what else is going on around us. As long as we're in the book, we're in the safety net of the Lord. Amen? And prayer, beloved. Prayer. We must fall in love with prayer like the church of the book of Acts was in love with prayer. Where they knew that prayer was the key to get God's attention. Before anything happened, the people of God, you can see it in scripture, they were praying and seeking the face of God. Our church, we've been recently, uh, since actually February, we... Uh, canceled 
pretty much every service. We just had one service Sunday morning. And we've been praying every day, Monday through Sunday. We just got back to our regular services. But people of God, I'm telling you, prayer works. I know it's, it's become cliche to say prayer works. But I've seen it with my own eyes. Prayer truly works. This sister from Spanish church, her son is addicted, messed up from the floor up. A few days ago, he went in church, got convicted, got baptized in the matchless name of Jesus. We had a young lady that was passing through the church. She heard the music, came inside, stayed for the service, went back home, got her husband and her baby, baby child, came back. She got baptized last Sunday, and now her, her, uh, her husband also got baptized in the matchless name of Jesus Christ. And I believe it's because of prayer. And there's been so many other people getting baptized that nobody, no, we're not announcing it. We just go to the church when nobody's there. We fill up the baptism. We baptize them in Jesus' name, and so be it. Praise God. They don't necessarily need to know, but they need to acknowledge that prayer is doing things. Prayer is working. Prayer causes God to hearken his ear unto his people. But now... As the people of God, we encounter something that we've all been brought out of things. We've all been brought out of addictions, depressions, anxieties, relationships that were abusive, suicidal thoughts that God delivered you from. But the enemy is very cunning. He is very subtle. And he will study you. And he will find your weaknesses. And slowly but surely, he will begin to present you with those weaknesses. And what those weaknesses will eventually do if you give in to them, they will begin to build up a stronghold within your mind. Are you with me? A stronghold within your mind that it's very difficult that when you come to church, you look apart, you act apart, you look sanctified and holified, you look like you belong, but the inside is so messed up. Because you've been walking around with these strongholds that have been built up in you. And sometimes these strongholds are so wicked and so perverse the heart is desperately deceitful. The heart is desperately deceitful and, all, and desperately wicked. Jeremiah 17 says, Who can know it? God knows the intents of the heart even before we do. And we must submit ourselves unto Him fully with prayer, die to Him daily. He says, You want to follow me? Go ahead. But this is what you have to do. You have to pick up your cross. Deny yourself daily and then you can go ahead and follow me. Because if you don't deny yourself, you're going to feed yourself. You're going to acknowledge yourself. You're going to think of yourself. You're going to want to please yourself. But this walk here is a sacrificial walk. We've turned into Christianity about God, what can you do for me? Instead of the reality of Christianity is God, what can I do for you? Praise God. And we must be very, very careful in this hour because it is the desire of the enemy to remove the redeemed of the Lord. To get rid of them because there is coming a great flow of the Spirit of God that's going to fill His people like never before. And they're going to begin to operate in ways that eyes have never seen and ears have never heard. I believe that the ancient path of old that we read in the book of Acts is being reestablished in the body of Christ, people of God. 
And you might think, well, where do I fit in all of this? I, I, I don't see myself to be a preacher. I don't see myself to be a, 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 a pastor, an apostle, or this or that. Listen, everybody here can pray unto God. Matter of fact, we're all called to pray, and we're all commissioned to go. You don't have to be a preacher. You don't have to be a pastor. You don't have to be a prophet. You don't have to be an apostle. You're commissioned to go, but it's very hard to go when you're so full of yourself. When you're full of self, it's hard to minister to somebody else. Because all you do is want to talk about yourself. Instead of wanting to talk about the one that resides inside of you, that dwells inside of you, that delivered you, that changed you and transformed you. The word of God says, if I be lifted up being Jesus, I will draw all men unto me. You want to see revival, lift him up. Acknowledge him. When that scripture comes to my mind, when Jesus quoted it, listen, Jesus was fully God, but he was also fully man. He was tempted like you and I were tempted, have been tempted, and still are being tempted. Just because he was God does not mean that he didn't endure all the things that need to be endured in this flesh. He was fully God while also being fully man. And he said something when he was in a synagogue preaching. He says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. One time I was reading that portion of scripture and it just fell upon me that what it would feel like for the spirit of God to be upon me. And if the spirit of God is upon me, it's something that should crush me to the point where I cannot be seen anymore in all you can see. It's the glory of God. All you can see is him and him alone. Amen. And I, he began to put in my mind like a water of bottle that is empty and you try to step on it. What's going to happen? It's going to crush. You're not going to be able to see it no more. And I begin to pray and say, God, that's how I want to be, Lord. I want to be to the point where I don't, I, I can't be seen by man anymore. All they can see is you. But that is going to come with consecration, brethren. It's going to come with a true desire of separating yourself from the world. We are of this world. We are in this world, but we're not of this world. We don't belong to them. We belong to him. And we're pilgrims just passing through. We know what he has prepared for us on the other side. But one thing that I've come to realize is that salvation is free. But consecration is not. That will cost you. That will cost you a life of sacrifice. A life of true separation. Amen? But back to this point of the mind. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, starting in verse 3, says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations. And every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. And bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. And having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Strongholds. Strongholds, beloved, are something that we wrestle with up here. Strongholds are something that can be discerned by a child of God if the Lord permits to discern that stronghold in that other individual. But more than not, strongholds 
sometimes go unnoticed for a really long time by those around you. There could be a lady in the church that has dealt with depression for years and years and years, but always puts up a smile when she comes to church. And everyone's hugging her, saying, how are you doing? She says, fine. While everybody else not realizing that there is such a stronghold that has captured her life, that it's very difficult for her to even give herself back to that ministry of intercession that God had called her into when she was first saved. Strongholds within the mind, like when we come to the house of the Lord and, and we keep those attitudes of the flesh, and we have brothers and sisters that are probably having a bad day and they look at us a certain way, and we start thinking this person hates us, and now you're, you've created a wall, you've created a stronghold, and now you think that you're hated by everybody in the church. And you've caused victimhood in your life when it's a stronghold that has been built up. The enemy knows your weaknesses. The enemy knows your strong points and your weak points. In World War II, the Japanese released this. I thought it was pretty funny, but when I heard about this, I was like, well, it, it kind of brought fear into the people. But they released an audio saying how the Japanese were just going to destroy and spank the Americans. Do you think they released it in their own language, in their own uh, a way of talking, in their own way? No, they studied the enemy. They studied America. And they released that announcement with American accent, with American mindset. So the enemy can be filled with fear. And so the enemy will do the same thing to the people of God to try to bring fear into our lives. And that's why it's important that you know who you are in him. You aren't just a person brought into this place to warm up these pews. You are not just here to just come a Sunday or Wednesday or prayer night. No, you are more than a conqueror in Christ. You are called for more than just this. There is more to God than just this. God forbid if that is our mindset that this is it. Jesus said, in my Father's house, there are many mansions. I believe that to be physical but also spiritual, that there is rooms that we can step into in the spirit realm and begin to dwell in those places and begin to learn new mysteries of the Lord as we begin to dwell in that place in the spirit. Amen. God is... We, we, we put God in this bottle. We, we need to take the limits off of him. But in order to take the limits off of him, we need to let him first break these strongholds in our mind that constraint him and limit him. That say, God, you can only touch me here, but you can't touch me when I'm driving. You can't touch me when I'm at home. You can't even move on me when I'm at work. The devil is a liar. That stronghold is keeping you down. Listen, there's times where I've been driving and I'm like, I'm just having a good time. I'm driving. Everything's normal. And the Lord just comes in that place. And I begin to cry so much that I have to pull over and just let God do in me what he wants to do. God, take me to that room. Take me to that place where you can do in me what it is that you want to do. There is times where I'm even at work and I, I just feel it come over me. And if there's people around me, I just begin to walk and I begin to pray in the Holy Ghost in a soft way. But I'm not going to let nothing hold me back from my relationship with me and my father. Because I know that is the only thing that's keeping me together. I don't know about you, but I was a mess. And I know the moment that I relinquish him, that I try to push him aside, I'm going to become a mess once again. Because he is the only thing that keeps me together. He is the only thing that can ever keep me together. He is the only thing that can ever keep you together. But we must submit unto him fully. 
We must submit to him totally. But these strongholds will play trick on us. These strongholds will make us feel, well, God can't do it. What's the point of praying? I've already lost. I've already lost that contract. I've already lost that deal. I've already lost that relationship. I've already lost my health. I've already lost my mind. My heart's already been broken. What is the point? God is God is a powerful God. Listen, your heart may have been broken, but the moment you experience the love of God, there is nothing like it. Nothing else matters anymore. I don't care what man broke your heart, what woman broke your heart. Once you give it to God, there is nothing like it. There is nothing like the love of God. It changes the way you think, the way you walk, the way you talk. I remember when I first encountered this thing, I came into an apostolic Pentecostal church. You people were crazy. You people were screaming and crying and praying, but I felt something. I felt something in that place. And that's why I encourage you guys today to pray and break through that realm. Break that atmosphere. Amen. Let, let your voice out and cry out to the Lord. God inhabits the praises of his people. When you begin to lift up the name of the Lord, he begins to dwell in that place in a supernatural way. But what happens? We limit the Lord with our attitudes, with our mindset, with our way of being. And we say, hey, not today. Today it's just a... Our pastor's not here. He's sick. It's just another day. Like they say, another day, another dollar. Another day, another. It's just what it is. Not a big deal. Every day is a big deal when you're serving God. Let me tell you, every day can be a day of miracles, can be a day of the supernatural. This is the day that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. I will acknowledge that it is him that does it all. When you begin to say, God, break this stronghold, Lord, I give it to you. Remove it. You, you know what a stronghold really is? It's a tower. It is a tower. And I, I know a lot of you sanctified folk have seen all these Disney movies that are about towers and stuff. And the princess, princess is in there. My wife will probably get really mad at me because I don't like Disney stuff. I just was never a fan. But I know there's, there's, a, you know there's towers and you have to rescue the princess or whatever. And when there's a tower, it's hard to get in and it's hard to get out. And you can't do that of yourself. You have to relinquish it to God. You have to first examine yourself and say, God, what is it? What is inside of me? What, what is in my mind that is keeping me bound, God, that every time I'm driving down the street and I see that lady, I'm, I'm looking them at, at, at them again and I'm lusting. I don't know what's going on. What is it, God, about me that when I look at that, at, that, at that individual, I start getting depressed, anxiety because of things that happened to me when I was young? What is it, God, about this situation that keeps me bound and in prison in my mind, but nobody else knows it? Only you know it, God, but yet I'm in this place. And God is saying, well, you haven't given it to me. You have not submitted it to me. So you haven't put it in the altar so I can come down and consume it with my fire and get rid of it and allow my fire to begin to purify and sanctify every part that's within you. Amen. I know I'm talking to somebody today. The mind is strong. You know there's been studies of women that have thought themselves to being pregnant and they grow a pregnant belly, but there's nothing inside. There's something called placebo. Is it, is it placebo where they give, you, they, they give you medication, but there's nothing there? And there's been studies that sometimes up to 73% of people were actually healed after that. You talk about the mind. You talk about the power that the mind has. Have you ever talked to somebody that's always talking about their problems and, and looking all depressed? They always look down. They always look beat up. They always look like they're walking with a limp. Have you talked to somebody that's always saying that they're sick? 
They go to the doctor and nothing's wrong with them, but it, they, they, they act and they look like they're really sick. But there's nothing there. The mind is a powerful thing, beloved. And when we begin to walk in God and in the things of God, the mind still is a powerful thing. That God wants to utilize for his kingdom, for his glory. But if we don't allow him, it's going to keep glorifying self. We're going to use it for what we want to do. But he wants to use us. He wants to use. And listen, we have to, we have to get this because sometimes people don't even want to come to God because of the shame that they feel because of those strongholds. I don't care what you've done. I don't care where you've been. I don't care what, what stronghold has been erected in your mind. God is able to free you from it, and he wants you to present it to him as it is. He doesn't want you to come to him dressed outside like you're all good, but on the inside you're so nasty and corrupt. He does not want that. He prefers to work with you from the inside out. That's why you can see addicts, you can see prostitutes, you can see heroin addicts come into the house of God and be delivered. And they're still looking all grunchy and dirty and different from everybody else. But they're praying, they're seeking God, they're bringing people into the house of God, they're giving Bible studies. Because God is not a respecter of persons. What he cares is that he has a hold of your heart and of your mind. When he spoke to the children of Israel, listen, the, the Ten Commandments, the commandments were never the initial intention of God. The initial intention of God was for him to give his law and put it in their heart. That's what his word says. But because they didn't want it in their heart. They wanted to be stuck in their ways. It had to be put in tablets. Made of stone. That's why we get that scripture. God, remove that heart of stone and put in its place a heart of flesh. A heart that can be molded by you. A heart that will submit to you. A heart that will be willing to hear from you and be obedient. Listen, sometimes the things that God asks for us are not easy to give up. Matter of fact, many of the times, the word of God will offend many, if not all. But blessed are the hungry and thirsty, for they shall be filled. If you say within yourself, God, I don't care what you're saying. I know it hurts, but I need you to tell me why you're telling me this. I need you to help me fix this thing inside of me so I can be in your perfect divine will. Amen. Because if we are not in the will of God, listen. There is a way... Of man that seemeth right, but the ends thereof is death. There's only one way, and that is Jesus. There's only one way, and that is really giving yourself over to him. And it will cost you everything, but you will gain it all. It will cost you everything that this world has to offer. But you will gain it all in the Lord Jesus. He never said that this was going to be easy. That never came out of his mouth. This will be a war within you. But the closer you get to God, the more you'll be able to say, God, here comes another one. Here comes another thought that's trying to build up a stronghold, Lord. Here it is. Take it. Take it, Lord, before it's too late. We will become sensitive to the devices of the enemy. Like I said before, the enemy is cunning, and he will come at you in angles that you did not expect. But he will come in you. He will come at you in your weaknesses. What are your weaknesses this morning? What does it matter for a man to gain the whole world but lose his own soul? We're so stuck on wanting things to be done our way. But when have we stopped and prayed and said, God, how do you want to do it, Lord? How do you want to guide this service today? 
What, what do you want to do in the midst of us, Lord? We need to be sick and tired of being sick and tired. There's too many folks that are just sick and tired of coming in and doing the same thing over and over and over again. It's time to get back into the book. It's time to get back into the path that God has ordained for his church. And that will cost you. He that hath ears, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the church. And I believe this is a message that God is causing man of God to speak out in this hour. Because the hour has drawn near, beloved. And I know we've said it over and over and over again. But I truly believe that rather the Lord comes soon or not. That this nation is soon to change forever. As of next year, it will be hard for many of you that grew up in this nation to even recognize it, as, is, as it already is hard to recognize. I believe the only thing that kept this nation together was the fact that they truly believed in the foundation of God, that they truly believed in the one and true and living God, our Lord Jesus Christ. And we've become, we've removed ourselves so far away from that. And the hour is coming where you will not be able to gather the way you gather and pray the way we got to pray just a moment ago. God has been sending winds, Sister Connor. One time I was praying at church and... And God didn't move in me there. We were having a prayer meeting. And uh, we're going through some challenges. And uh, I got in my truck and I got to driving. And the Lord began to speak to me. And I'm closing, sis, if you want to have some altar call. And the Lord began to speak to me as I was leaving the driveway. And uh, so many people telling me this, telling me that. And I was just like, God, what, what's going on? And I, I, I prayed for a while. And I got going. I got in my truck. And the Lord began to explain to me that he has been sending our way soft winds, is what I heard him say, soft winds of judgment to check our root system. And... When he began to proceed to tell me, but I'm soon yet to bring the wind of judgment upon this nation. Because my mind was stuck in church. My mind was stuck what the church is going through. That I had forgotten what this world is going to go through. And he said, but the time is coming where the wind of judgment will be set forth. And those that are not rooted in me will be uprooted. And when he said that, I, I was filled with fear and trembling. And I began to examine my heart and I said, God, I don't want to be caught up in that. I mean, let it come. But I want to be held by your hands. And I began to have this overwhelming Fear and travail just come over me for myself first and then for my wife and then for my family and then for this world. I just begin to travail in there because we don't understand yet what is to come. If we did, every single one of us would just say, Pastor, a uh, uh, preacher, stop talking. Let's just start to pray, please, because there's such a need to pray. You would understand the great need if you were able to see. What truly is to come. But I do believe in intercession. 
Lord began to speak to Ezekiel and said, who will build up the wall? And who will stand in the gap? When you're praying, when you're interceding, you are standing in the gap for those that are sinning, for those family members that you still say, God, you need to bring them, you need to save them, you need to protect them, Lord. Trouble them, shake them up, trouble their life up until they realize that they need you. We need to keep this thing going. We cannot stop believing and trusting in the power of prayer and intercession. We cannot stop and give up now because the wind is coming and nothing can stop it but your prayers can cause one more to come in and then another one to come in and you may not know it, it might not even be here, it might be somewhere in a whole different nation. It might be in New Zealand, sister. That here this church is praying and interceding and God will be able to use you over there. Listen, Jesus says, pray for laborers. For the harvest is full. But we get so caught up trying to go and get the harvest without even praying. God, help our mindset, Lord. We can't win nobody or reach anybody if there is no prayer. There needs to be prayer. True prayer and consecration. Amen. I feel a sweet presence of God sweeping in this place. Stand to your feet. Lift up your hands. Those that want to come up to this altar and pray, we're going to pray. I know we're running out of time here. Praise God. Jesus be the Lord of all. But I want you to come up and I want you to begin to pray. God, examine my heart, examine my mind. Yes. And I pray, God, you begin to cast every stronghold down. Jesus be the Lord. Your prayer life will never be the same again. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. From the young to the old, your prayer life will never be the same again. In Jesus' holy name. That's it, lift up your voice, hallelujah. Lift up your voice in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Jesus be 